Hey! One of the new features in Angular v16 is automatic route parameter mapping using the input decorator. What does that mean? Well, we may have code that looks like this. Here we inject the activated route, then get the route parameter from that activated route snapshot, dotting down into its properties. In Angular v16 and later, we can instead write code like this. Here we use an input property defined with the input decorator. Much shorter and easier. Cool! In this video, let's walk through an explanation and an example. Here is a simplified version of my Acme Product Management, or APM, application. The app component HTML file provides a menu, displayed as a nav bar. The menu options use the router link directive to route to the features of the application. The home option links to the welcome route. The product list option links to the products route. At the bottom, we see the router outlet directive. The router outlet defines the location on the page to display the routed content. Instead of the two tags I have here, let's use a self-closing tag. Self-closing tags were new in Angular v15.1. So instead of the two separate tags, we can specify a single self-closing tag, like this. Any routed components will appear in this part of the page. Looking at the app.routes.ts, we see the route configuration. The welcome route displays the welcome component in the router outlet. The empty path redirects to the welcome route so if the user accesses the site, they are directed to the welcome page. The double asterisk is the wildcard route. Anything that doesn't match a prior route will match this route and redirect to the welcome route. This could instead route to a page not found component. The products path is lazy loading the product routes as defined in this constant. I'll right click and select go to definition. And here we have the product routes. If there is nothing more on the product's route, the product list component is displayed in the router outlet. When routing to the product detail component, we want to pass the ID of the product whose detail we want to display. We do that by adding a route parameter to the URL. We identify a route parameter with a colon before the parameter name. Anywhere we reference this parameter, we'll use this name. So if there is a value after products in the route, Angular routes to the product detail component and passes along that value as the ID parameter. Where do we set this parameter? Let's open the product list component HTML file. Here is an ng4 that displays each of our products in a table. The first column of each row displays the product name. It uses the router link directive to define the route parameter in this case, the ID of the product, so this ID is appended to the end of the URL. I'll run it. Here we see the welcome page. I'll click Product List, the URL changes, and the Product List component displays in the router outlet. Notice that each product name is a link. If I click on a product, the ID of the selected product is appended to the URL, and pass to the product detail component. The product detail then appears in the router outlet and displays the details for the defined product. Let's go back and do that again. Notice how the URL changes and the page displays the appropriate product details. How does the product detail component know which product to display? It reads the parameter from the URL. Let's go back to the code. The product detail component reads the parameter from the URL to determine which product to display. One way to read the URL is using Angular's Activated Route Service. Here we first inject the Activated Route Service using the new Inject keyword. Alternatively, you could use the constructor to inject this service dependency. When the detail page first loads, we use the onInit lifecycle hook to read the parameter. We use the activated route service, access the snapshots param map, and call get, passing in the name of the parameter to get. This name must match the name we defined in the product route configuration. 
we see here that the parameter name is ID. Going back to the component, the get returns a string or null if the parameter is not found. If we are able to read an ID from the route, we set that ID into the product detail service. The product detail service then finds the product with the defined ID. Now let's change this code to use the input decorator instead. The first thing we want to do, and the step I so often forget, is to let Angular know that we want to use the input decorator to read route parameters. We do that in the application configuration. In this example, I'm using standalone component bootstrapping. Here, after the routes, I'll add with component input binding and add the required import. If you are using classic bootstrapping, you'd instead set binding component inputs to true in the router module for root, like this. We've now enabled the automatic route parameter mapping using the input property. Going back to the product detail component, we add an input property using the input decorator and add the required import statement. I'll name the input property the same as the route parameter name, which in this example is ID. Route parameters are strings, so I'll set the initial value to an empty string. If I wanted to use a different property name here, such as product ID, I can, but I then need to pass the route parameter name to the input property, like this. That way, it can match up the route parameter to the appropriate input property. But let's keep it simple and name the property the same as the route parameter. I'll undo this last change. By using the input property, we no longer need the activated route. I'll delete it here and here. Then I'll change ID to this.id here and here. Our set selected product ID method is expecting a number, so let's add the number constructor around the ID to convert it to a number. I'll bring back up the browser and pick a product. And it still works. It's correctly displaying the data for the product I selected. Click back and pick another one. Yep, it works. One question I always like to ask myself is why? In this case, why do we need route parameters at all? Couldn't the product list component store the ID in a property of a service? Then the product detail component could read that ID from the service instead of from the route. One key reason is that by appending the ID to the URL, we get deep linking. Deep linking allows the user to save or share the URL. Then use that URL to automatically directly link to a specific product. Say that your birthday is coming up and you send a friend an Amazon link. That link wouldn't be useful if it didn't navigate directly to a specific product. Let's try it with this example. I'll copy this link, then click Home to go back to the Welcome page. I'll paste the link, and it takes me directly to the defined product. Nice! Use deep linking anytime you want to allow your users to save or send direct links. Let's go back to the code. Starting with Angular v16, we can use an input property defined with the input decorator to access route parameters. This gives us a shorter and easier syntax. We no longer need to work with Angular's activated route service. But don't forget to enable this functionality. If you are using standalone bootstrapping, add with component input binding to provide router. For classic bootstrapping, set binding component inputs to true in the router module dot for root call. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.